Hey, happy Friday, everybody. Hope everybody's having a great week. So today is Friday's uh, Friday's video. What, forget the lights, Dad? That's right, go ahead. Oh, okay, so you're gonna see some bright come in from the, from the side here, kind of, because we got the doors open. It's a nice, nice sunny day. In fact, we may be doing some fishing this afternoon. We'll see. Anyway, all right, so um, first things first. On the LTS last Saturday, um, well, fishing is the first thing. Well, yeah. So you're, do, do first your stuff after here. the video. Yeah, then yeah. we'll go fishing. Okay, so on the LTS uh, last Saturday, I had been telling people, and you guys had seen on the coffee and questions, that I talked about everybody that attended the LTS was going to get a free gift. Well, you did, or I'm assuming that you did, because through uh, GoToWebinar, um, I gave a handout, and that handout, so so go back and check, and I don't know, maybe if you, many of you got it, because I haven't heard from anybody, and I knew there was something I was forgetting to say at the end of the LTS, but um, anyway, I attached a handout uh, to you guys that you should have received, and it was a, a basically um, oh, an Excel file of a, a whole list of all of the newsletters, uh, the titles and what they're about. So that was kind of my, my gift to you guys. We had been uh, compiling them for a while. Now, now we have the YouTube channel where we have playlists, and this will go into the newsletters playlist, all the coffee and questions. And so there's lots of different playlists. So if you haven't seen that yet, by the way, go to our channel and look under the, right underneath the, the main picture, you'll see a word that says playlist. Click on that, and then there'll be categories of playlists on there, which really allows you to find um, a video on a certain subject much, much easier. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to define those even more as it goes along. So anyway, so, what, uh, so that was that. If you, uh, if you have any questions on that handout, uh, if you were, if you did attend the LTS, you should have gotten that as a as a separate thing. But if you didn't, uh, let me know, and I'll find a way to get it to you. Or write me an email, and I'll email it to you. Okay, so on with today's subject. Been getting a lot of questions lately on um, on inset letters. Okay, uh, I got to go back. First of all, my coffee and questions the other day about sending pictures of your signs. Wow, uh, great looking signs. I'm getting inundated with pictures, which is great. It's terrific. I'm going to start on the coffee and questions, probably showing a picture every day of maybe the sign of the day or the sign maker of the day. So that's going to start next week sometime. So I just want you guys to know. But if you could do me a favor, keep sending me pictures and I'll get to them. But uh, if you could just send me one picture of your favorite sign, that will help me out quite a bit, at, at least for now. That way I won't have to separate them and all that. So that's on that. Um, so anyway, this one is going to be, this newsletter is going to be all about inset letters. Uh, specifically carving small inset letters and big inset letters. How you go about it, how you might make uh, corrections of carving inset letters. Uh, depending on what size they are. So let's get right into it. Um, I'm going to start with my big three inch letter here and kind of work my way down. I'm going to go three inch, two inch, inch and a half, and then one inch and one inch. Are you on the board right now, Dad? I'm okay. on the board. All right. Did you see that part? Because I wasn't sure. Yeah. Three inch, two inch, inch and a half, one inch, and then one inch and one inch western. So I'm going to do the one inch western last because that's the one that there could be some uh, some adjustments on. So first things first, I don't know whether you guys have seen me do this, but just in case you haven't, this is a silicone spray. The only reason I'm doing that is because I don't want to spray directly on the board, which I almost leaked on it anyway. So all I do is just spray some silicone spray on there, then wipe off the excess. That just helps it slide better. And, yeah. And that won't, and, and wipe off the excess so it doesn't kind of get into the grain of the board. All right, so let's uh, let's get into this here. Um, I need to make sure that cord is out of the way. I'm going to carve this big one first, so I'm going to go down fairly deep with this 60 degree, and we'll see how this turns out. Oh man, almost forgot my, forgot my magnifiers. All right, here we go. All right, power will be good. That might make a difference. Yep.
and lift the router up so they can see what you're doing there. Okay? Oh, sorry. Yeah, that's I right. keep forgetting that. Yeah. You can point out that you're just, you're just doing the inside of the letter. All right, so let me explain what, what's going on here, guys. So you saw I went on the, the inside and I left all of this stuff in here. I can go back and take that out. Now, the same, the same rule really applies on, on whatever size letters that you're cutting. Um, it won't show up so much on one inch because your cutter is wide enough pretty much to make it all in one stroke. Now, um, so now I'll go back and I'll take this stuff out. So when you're cutting, and I've had this question many times, if you're cutting a line that is wider than your cut than your cutter will cut, then just cut, you know, on both sides and then go back and take that other stuff out. The other question that I've had is um, there is in some instances, if you're not used to it and you're brand new, when your cutter, let me make a visualization here. Are you in there on that, Dad? Yes. When you're cutter and you're cutting this top line, well, this this side of the letter, the top of the letter is hidden from you because it's on the other side of the bit. And somebody says, you know, how do you know where that line is? Well, for me, I know because, you know, after 100,000 signs, I kind of figure out where that line is. But for you new people, if you want to make sure that you're on that line, well, you don't have any problem when you're, when you're doing this, right? Because the line is now on your side of the cutter. Uh, on, on the other side of the cutter, I'm trying to, you know, I'm making hand gestures, you guys can't see me. So the sign is on this side, on your side of the cutter. Well, if you want to do the same thing for the top, well, then just turn that around. And you can cut this upside down and cut the top of that letter with that line toward you. So then you, there's never a guesswork. Then if you want to just turn it back around, there's many times where I turn a board different directions. If I need to see something a little bit better and it's on the other side of the cutter, I'll turn the sign around. So that's just a, a tip, especially for you new people. So now let me take out the rest of this, uh, that wood in there. You okay over there, Dad? Yeah. I heard you shuffling. That was the dog. That was the dog? Oh, yeah. I thought you were doing a little dance over there. I no, was... the dog's doing a little dance. <laughs> okay. Something's bugging her. She's in here wants to lay at my feet. <laughs> okay. All right, so that's the way that comes out. Uh, makes a pretty good letter. Nice texture when you do that in the in the, that leftover wood in there. All right, so let's move on to the, the inch and a half. I don't have to go quite as deep for the inch and a half. That wasn't the dog, that was me. I just dropped the, the brush. I'll get it. Okay, I'll let you get that. All right, so let's carve these uh, two inch numbers here. For some reason you're using that quarter cable instead of the DeWalt? No, no specific reason. So I just had the question because the DeWalt has a light, so it shows up a little bit better. But this is showing up good. Yeah, no, uh, no specific reason. I've got another cutter that I want to use in a few minutes here, so I had both both routers set up with a different bit, so it makes it nice and easy to just change the base, but no uh, specific reason. A lot of static electricity in the air today.
Okay, so now, so those are the two inch, and you can see um, it did leave some in here. It left a little bit of wood in there, and I can go out and go in and take that out, or I can leave it because that won't end up being a white uh, spot when I when I sand it off. But I could go out, go in there, and take it uh, take that out. But it's just obviously not near as much room as there uh, or leftover as there was on the K. So it's self pretty much self-explanatory. Again, you come down one side of the letter and then the other side of the letter, and whatever's left in there, you can take it out in this particular instance, or you can leave it. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and leave that. Okay, I'm going to move on to these inch and a half letters down here at the bottom. And uh, I probably could leave it about the same depth. We'll see how that works out. Now, you can, let me talk about this a little bit. You can see when I was carving that, guys, I left a, just a hair extra there. And so keep keep the shine up just oh. a little bit. Yeah, that's okay. That's so you good. can now, see. Now go ahead. That when I when I was making my first initial cut around that that O, and even now I left a little bit more there. I could go back and take that out. But when I make my initial cut, sometimes if I feel like the grain is going to kind of uh, try and run with me a little bit, which it did a little bit up here. I got a little bit of a bobble. I stay away from that line a little bit, and then I come back and I trim it out and keep that router moving and trim it out. O's are really tough. They're probably the toughest letters that there are to carve. Now, I know that's a different philosophy than, than Dad always uh, used, but that's because... Uh, yeah, he forced himself to make sure that he was right on the line on the first cut, but that's where he and I differ a little bit. I, uh, I'd rather stay away from it a little bit, give myself a little room for error, and then go back a second or maybe even a third time and, and just kind of, when you're not taking so much uh, wood out at a time, it, it doesn't have as much chance to grab on you in most cases. All right, so. I just like to do it all in one shot instead of doing it two or three times. Yeah, well, that's the difference between you and me. <laughs> pretty much uh, straightforward there um, no difference really on that uh, rather than the than the two inch uh, other than there are a couple places where you know like the inside of the O uh, part of the Y that uh, and the S where it's a little fatter stroke in the center that I needed to go back and catch the other I'll side tip that up just a little 
So on the fat part, like the fat part of the S, maybe the, the wide side of the, of the Y and then the, the O, that requires a double cut. Now when I go to my standard, uh, the standard one inch, that'll be pretty much one cut all the way. And I know that that's where some of you are having some, some issues when there really isn't a lot of, uh, let's say, room for error when whatever you're cutting is both sides of the line at the same time. And I think that's where the issue really comes up for most people with, when cutting inset letters. So um, I'm going to hopefully help you out. That's why I saved the one inch for last because I'm going to hopefully help you out with that. So let me uh, start with this here. And uh, we'll cut a couple letters. And you reset the depth on that. I did, yeah. I reset it to uh, shallower. <laughs> I don't know what the depth is. You can see how I kind of, guys, as I kind of uh, ease my way into that so I can see how deep that's going to cut. And that feels about right for me. Now when I just made that line, you can see I was cutting both sides at, a, at the time. What's really critical, what's really critical is that you keep that router moving. Once you stop that router, it's going to make a little bit of a bobble in there. I don't care who you are, it's going to make a little bit of a bobble unless you get that router bit out of there. So once I start on a straight line and I'm cutting both sides at the same time, and in fact in sometimes I'm cutting wide enough that I'm cutting on the outside of both of those, then there's really no, not much room for error. Keep that router moving on the, in that straight line especially. Okay, so again, pretty straightforward. I was cutting, uh, you know, one depth, one line, uh, coming all the way, coming all the way down, all the way up. And again, that's where I think you guys may be having some issues. So now, what I'm going to do is I am going to cut. Uh, I think I'll cut a couple of these Western letters and a couple of these uh, standard letters. Then I'm going to change cutters and I'll, I'll explain why when I do it. So let me cut these here. cut these top two, but I can't cut that same depth because there, those letters, um, there's a lot more detail to them. In fact, that's even a little bit deep right there. I'm going to take that even a little bit shallower.
Now, let's talk about this a little bit. Because of, the, of these letters, the way they are, they're just, it's a lot tougher to get into some of those spots if I was trying to go this depth. So I don't know what my depth is, but I'm, I go again, you guys know, most of you, unless you're brand, brand new, know I go more, more by the width of the cutter. So I did have, oh, <coughs> excuse me, see dust, uh, sawdust sneeze. See dust, sawdust sneeze. <laughs> So anyway, I did have a double cut on, on these, uh, whereas this was a single cut. Now, you'll also notice that I saved my little points on the sides for the end. I would rather come down that straight line, keep that thing running, and then go back and cut those. I think it makes for a little bit uh, crisper look and a little bit uh, better look rather than, than come down this line and then go in that dip and come down the rest of the line. I would rather keep that line straight and then, then just add that dip at the end. Now, what I'm going to do next is I am going to switch cutters and I'm going to, this is why I have the, the DWP set up with a profile bit. Now, back in the old days when I first learned how to carve signs uh, from a guy that taught me, uh, you would have never seen this guy cut inset letters with a v-groove bit we just didn't do it or actually he didn't do it he always cut inset letters with a profile bit or well what we consider to be a profile bit back then that was long before we designed it the guy i'm talking about by the way is the one that's behind the camera so um he always cut inset letters never cut inset letters like this he always cut them with the profile bit so I don't know if you can get in on that, Dad, in case these, yeah. some of these people haven't seen the profile bit. I so got it. that's what I'm going to do. Uh, the reason that I kind of evolved to using a V-groove, number one was for time. Uh, cutting with a V-groove is much faster. I believe it's much faster. Um, it takes out more wood, and it, uh, it, it's a, an easier process for me. Uh, when you're cutting inset letters with a profile bit, you leave a lot more wood. And a lot of times it's a second and third operation. Um, if, for instance, I had left, um, left uh, and cut all of these with a profile bit, these bigger letters with a profile bit, I would have let a, left a lot more meat in here on all of these, and I would have had to gone back, and it would have taken longer to take all that stuff out. Um, However, on, especially on these little one-inch letters, you may be better off switching over to cutting them with a profile bit because um, it gives you a little bit more room for error because then you can treat it kind of like what I did uh, with the 60 degree on here. Whereas I was only cutting one line, I had all of this in case there was a bobble, I had all of this to move into. Well, that it will be the case when I'm cutting these with a, um, with a profile bit. Let me demonstrate.
So, if you look at the difference between these letters and these letters, um, there's no doubt that it allows you, I could have even gone a lot deeper than what I did. I, I just left it at that depth because it's, that's plenty deep enough that I won't be sanding out any detail. So, you might agree that these are much sharper lines and will look better than these uh, that when, when it's all done. And I'm going to go ahead and spray these and sand them off because if I don't, I'm going to get complaints, especially from the guy behind the camera. Um, so I want to give you guys that as an alternative way to do inset letters if you're really having a difficult time. This is actually easier than this because, again, like I say, you've got more room to move around and uh, a lot more, um, let's say, buffer zone. Uh, as far as not being so critical. Now, um, I'm going to go ahead and carve these last three and uh, get those done. Okay, so you can, again, you can see the difference between these and these. When it's all said and done, the difference, not that big a deal. Uh, I think most of the time when you're carving a sign for a customer, they probably won't even know this difference, but you may. And you may feel more comfortable cutting these inset letters with a profile bit, um, and, and that's fine. There's nothing to say that you can't do that. You can absolutely do that, and you can probably um, maybe get a sharper line, which these are sharper lines than these. So what's your opinion on that, Dad? That's exactly the way I feel. I'd, any small letters, I'd, I'd recommend doing with a profile bit. Yeah, so, it, you know, it, it, again, they're your signs, guys. You decide which way you like, but I can't recall that when I did that other video on inset letters that I even talked about that. I don't, I don't think I did, uh, possibly cutting them with a profile cutter. Okay, I went ahead and sprayed this off camera because you guys didn't know to see, didn't need to see that. You've seen me do that lots of times. So I sprayed it. It's all dry. Let's sand it off, see what she looks like. sanded that a little bit more with the with the rough paper just simply because I'm not going to finish sand this it's just for demo so um, let's let's blow it off and see how it came out So, 
I guess people are going to think you're a robot. That looks like it's machine carved. <laughs> well, yeah, if you ask my wife, you probably get that answer. So anyway, so you might think, and, and you know, and I, and I agree that these, these three on both ones are a little bit sharper than the ones done with a V-groove. So again, guys, it's, it's completely your choice. And my opinion is that this, these will actually probably, they'll take a little bit longer to carve, but they're a little bit easier, a little bit more room for error uh, if you carve with your profile bit. So go ahead and give that a try and see what you think, guys. Anyway, you, so any of these, obviously, you could carve with your profile bit. They'll just take longer. They'll leave more meat inside that then you could go back with a 60 or the 90 and take out, however you want to do it. But anyway, hope that helps, guys. Again, thanks for... Uh, Thanks for watching. Um, please subscribe to our channel and uh, Coffee and Questions tomorrow is Saturday. So there's a Coffee and Questions tomorrow morning. And uh, we will see you then. And uh, within the next week or two, we'll announce next month's LTS. So um, subscribe to our channel. Go to our website. If you need any supplies, you know how to get a hold of us. Uh, anything we can do to help, uh, email us, call us, write us. Uh, you know, note on a homing pigeon, whatever. Just uh, let us know if you have any questions. We'd be happy to help. We'll see you next time, guys. Tomorrow morning, coffee and questions. Bye.